Hey everyone, this is Elias from RevMatch Media, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 2022 Mini Cooper John Cooper Works model. Now, <laughs> even though this is mini, this packed a ton of fun. Well, let's go ahead and get started. We get started in the front and we can see this is a mean looking mini. <laughs> I do love this front end. So a couple of things with this one, uh, we do have the LED headlights in the front. They do have the cornering option on them as well. Uh, I do love this headlights. obviously classic mini, but there's some fun little things to it. Uh, so the circle around is actually a daytime driving light and it also works as the turn signal. So this guy will flash orange. Uh, it was kind of fun when I had my turn signal on at a traffic light and I'm seeing this orange ring just kind of reflecting off of the car in front of me. So that was a nice cool little, little detail on that. And again, we have the black uh, framing on this around and we have that that on it or that piano black uh, trim to it on this which looks really good especially with this gray color this gray color looks unbelievable so we'll start on the top here we have this yeah non-functioning hood scoop so there isn't this is actually blocked off but you get a pass because you do have a massive opening here so this is blocked off but this is opened this little area here is blocked off this is open more we have your radiator intercooler i do love these openings here they look really nice with the front little spoiler or front lip here we have I wasn't really concerned about hitting anything because this actually had it, it's a small car so i was able to give it some space in the front and the back was still within the parking spot so yeah no need to worry about that this guy looks really good and just that little red accent you know i'm a sucker for black and and red colors but yeah this is a this is a fun looking little front end let's go ahead and take a look at what's under the hood you get under the hood and uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the hood looks kind of funny when it's up because the headlights are just look like they're floating. Um, but we get under the hood and we have the 2.0 liter inline four. Uh, it is make with the turbocharger, it is making 228 horsepower and 236 pound feet of torque. Now, this little guy is really stuffed in here. There is virtually no space for anything in here that i can see so at least you know what at least the the headlights are easy to change because um yeah my brother had a beetle and that was a nightmare to get to those uh headlights in the back to literally change out a bulb so at, at least this is easy but everything else looks to be yeah pretty tough to kind of get to if you decide to work on your own uh, mini but uh as far as the power this thing was great this thing was amazing it is connected to a transmission with six speeds we'll get to what it is uh, a little bit later but this has been a lot of fun the mapping is a little weird though the first gear the power delivery is is very limited uh i guess they're doing it to avoid wheel spin um but it takes a while for the car to get up there but second gear is extremely strong um so yeah it's kind of it's kind of weird but we have this and yeah i've been surprised by this little guy <laughs> a lot of fun well let's go ahead and see what we have in the wheel and tire package we get down to the wheel and tire package and we have the jcw circuit spoke two-tone wheel 18 inch wheel and these are really nice. It does have a cool shape where the wheel kind of pops out from the center, um, but it's still kind of going in from the center, but these spokes kind of come out a little bit. Nice, great design aspect to it. I, I do love that design. And just overall, the two-tone is a nice uh, look to it. And they are wrapped in the Pirelli P0s with the 20540 on this. And this wheel and tire package is, uh, let's just say, a little noisy, but it was all, for, all was forgiven with the amount of noise and the feedback it was giving it. Let's just say, yeah, it wasn't noise, it was just 
feedback. <laughs> it was giving us a lot of feedback to the road. Uh, would I have liked a little bit more side wall on the tire? Maybe. Um, it is, you know, if we maybe go 17 inch, but still have this shape or this size, uh, it, I think it would have been perfect. Now, these weren't bad. These were actually perfect, um, but they they were a little bit on the noisier side, gave us more feedback than some people may be accustomed to. I didn't mind it. It was great. I loved it. There was tons, tons of grip on this, um, but yeah, it actually looks really good. And those brakes were really good. Red caliper looks awesome with this gray color. Uh, but yeah, I was uh, really impressed with this. Well, let's go ahead and see what we have on the side. We take a look at the side and it's pretty obvious it's a Mini Cooper. <laughs> so a couple of things that are really nice. Again, this color is beautiful. We have those headlights, that little bezel around it in black. Uh, we have these little covers here over the fender um, that, you know, adds that nice more like performance or just a, a nice little look to it. And of course we have some John Cooper works badging on there. This is with the little turn signal. It's really small, but nice little design to it. Now with Mini Coopers, the fun thing about them is you get to change the roof color as well as the mirrors. So there's there's different varying things that you can put on a Cooper. So with this one, they opted for the red. And let's just say I love the red. Uh, again, it looks really, really good. Black is also good. Typically, I feel like if you if you have a Mini Cooper, you need to get a different color from the car itself and the roof. But yeah, they opted for the red one here. Again, with this being the two door model, we only have two doors. Uh, and this guy here just looks really good from the side profile uh, of the Cooper. So I do love that little wing there. And the wheels look good. You know, nice big size wheel for a fairly small car. Looks, has good proportions to it. But yeah, now let's take a look at the keyless entry. So we have the key fob. I'll go ahead and put it in my hand and I'll put my hand in and pull and it doesn't open. Yes, so it doesn't have a, like a proximity sensor to just open up. There is a little button here. You do have to press to unlock and then you're able to open up. It's fine. Believe it or not, I've been using the button. I haven't forgotten that it has a button. I missed it the first time and then that's it. I was able to easily use the button. Now we have frameless windows. Usually I'm not a big fan of, but this is actually fairly, fairly stable. And uh, it's not like others that are just flopping really dangerously, um, but it's been good. Uh, yep. Just close that and you can lock it as well. And there you have it. Well, let's go ahead and see what we have in the back. We take a look at the back and man, this thing still continues to be just a little mean mini. <laughs> so a couple of things. Uh, we start off with the roof spoiler. This thing looks really good. Cool design to it. And again, in this red compared to the gray looks really, really good. I do love that. And we have your nice, cool designed tail lights back here. Little uh, Easter egg here. I know it's, it can be a little confusing though, because even though the flag is, this is correct for the flag, it kind of points, the left one points to the right and the right one points to the left. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be one or the other. It, it, it is what it is, so to speak. So we have that. And again, we have some of these black piano uh, designs to it. And this has this little cool uh, rear diffuser down here. We do have dual exhaust in or dual exhaust tips in the middle, very racer kind of thing to it. And then we go ahead and we open it. So there, the key fob doesn't have a button to have it actually open. So it is manually, you still, it unlocks, but you have to push it up. There's not much space. <laughs> so there's not much space in the back, but there is a compartment under here, which was a lifesaver. When we went on our trip, we did have a fairly medium sized uh, luggage and it didn't fit by itself. But when you open that up, you were able to easily, cause the, 
that little cover does kind of match up with the back seats. We were able to easily put it because it is pretty deep. I would say probably about here and it gave us that extra room we needed. So yeah, just don't expect a ton of space back here. So we got this closed and let's take a look at the key fob. So when we take a look at the key fob, we realize that there isn't many options for this. And one thing that it is missing is the remote start. So this doesn't have remote start, but that's fine. The reason why it doesn't have a remote start is because this is a six speed manual. Yes, we have a manual mini as a loaner. I was so excited. So with that being said, we're not gonna start it like this. Let's go ahead and jump inside and go for a ride. We get inside of the mini and yeah, it's mini in both <laughs> the size sense and the brand sense as well. So we get to the door really quick and we can see, yeah, there's a lot of black. So this has the piano black finish to some of the things. Uh, it does have some ambient lighting in here. It's not that strong. Uh, I couldn't figure out how to change the color. Uh, yeah, because we'll get to this guy soon. But yeah, it ha this has the Car Harman Kardon system and it is loud. So really, really cool design. You know, you have your little speaker driver there. You get to the seat and these are actually really comfortable. I was really surprised that, you know, even though it is a small car and I'm not the smallest of guys, I felt comfortable in this. We did a really long road trip in this and no complaints regarding support. My positioning was nice. Uh, I, I am able to sit low on it and it does have heated seats. One day it was fairly colder and I just want to try try out the heat heated seats and it got hot really fast but it wasn't as scorching hot in the sense of like it's too uncomfortable to have so it was a nice little touch to the uh to the cold weather <laughs> and then we get over to the steering wheel and I'm a little confused with this I and well it's mini so you can definitely see it's the mini steering wheel it is a little on the on the thicker side, the actual wheel, but it's nice and comfortable. So this is the leather wrap option. And I like the feel of the wheel, but I these controls were a little lackluster. And it, it's very BMW in the sense of when I needed to change a track, I had to push a button to activate the track changing menu to then say, okay, I want to go ahead and change it. Instead of just having to, uh, you know, go ahead and press the button that goes to the next track so yeah that was a little eh. and the cruise control was okay it just i don't know the this side here the buttons was just not very inspiring but the wheel itself was great i loved the wheel and it feels nice there's a little little secret to it as well so we'll get to that later but we have the gauge cluster and the gauge cluster was another thing that was a little uh another lackluster kind of detail and that is that because this wheel doesn't have that much of an opening up here this little thing is fairly small uh, i can read things fine because the content is big but the wheel itself is covering some information down here regarding my my mpgs you know right now i'm in eco mode so or or their uh, green mode and I can't see how much more I'm saving by, by my pattern of driving. So it does have, it does block some information that's down here. Yeah. And then we have the heads up display, which I found out literally yesterday, which would have been, which is day five of having this. Um, and yeah, uh, I didn't miss it. I didn't feel, I just saw an opening there and I thought, okay, cool. That's just to defrost but yeah the defrost is way up there um i i don't miss it <laughs> I, I mean i it's okay it's just again this that little screen doesn't pop up really high so the top of my wheel is actually blocking some of that and yeah it, it almost makes me wish i didn't have it so i didn't have to complain about it <laughs> so but yeah when you're in sport mode though it is pretty it, it the content does jump higher 
and it is very useful because you have your shift light on there that is definitely a, a, a nice option when you're in sport mode only when you're normal mode your speed gets basically covered by the steering wheel itself then we get to the entertainment center and this is classic mini i mean you have that big round screen that you have uh with mini and it's been good it's been good in the sense that i haven't wanted to use it much it's i've just been enjoying the ride so much that this has kind of almost been an afterthought with with this i just set up apple carplay and said okay that's fine that's all i need and i just want to go ahead and, and use that i haven't vent i tried venturing out into the menu it is a little cumbersome it is there's it's not a very obvious uh, system to really get into so yeah and there is one one thing uh that i liked in sport mode that lets you see the horsepower and and torque numbers which is nice but I can't seem to find it again. <laughs> I found it once and I can't seem to find it, which is kind of where I was like, uh, yeah. So CarPlay as well, wireless CarPlay uh, only, I think, because I couldn't set it up with my cable. So I believe it's only wireless Apple CarPlay. So just make sure that if you have a device that is Apple CarPlay compatible, that it is also wireless Apple CarPlay compatible. <laughs> The other thing is I did lose connection with it once because I went to go get the mail and I had my phone with me. The car was still on and it broke connection. And then from there on was just havoc of like, okay, go ahead and connect, go ahead and connect, turn off my device, turn off the car. It just, it, yeah, that, that was a little cumbersome. But once I got it set up, which was literally delete it from my, from my phone as a device, redo it, once I got that set up, it's been fine. It's been great. Uh, I left it in the car when I go get the mail to just avoid that. But yeah, uh, the this guy is actually really cool. So this actually adapts to whatever you are doing. So you can see, <laughs> you can see that it actually works as right now as a tachometer or because you can see when I rev it, the revs go up or the lights go around yeah when i change the temperature it switches over to that it's a little gimmicky but it was fun and that's what this mini is it it's a little mini a little car but packed with a lot of fun stuff so yeah we have that little guy happening up here and again the apple carplay <clears throat> once you get it working was great this Harman Kardon system, yes, you definitely need to get this. It is loud, especially in this small little car, you definitely need to get this system. We come down here to the AC controls and yeah, it's been great. I mean, it's very simple, nothing. Uh, it's been kind of cool, so we haven't needed to, to push the, the unit uh, for making it cold, but it works. And then we have your, just your controls down here for the heated seats, the end, a little bit more AC buttons down here. Now, one of my favorite things is the start stop of this car. And that is this little, the switch, the way that these switches feel are really, really nice. I do love it. But the start stop, what it does is when you have the car off and you put the clutch in, which is what you typically have to do, which uh, I kind of gave it away. Um, you put the clutch in and this little, it has a little light behind here. It turns red. So it tells you it's ready to go. <laughs> Again, little gimmick thing, but it was like, whoa, that's cool. And my kid loved it. He loved whenever I needed to start up the car. He was like, dad, dad, put the pedal in, put the pedal in. And it started up. So real, real cool little thing. Again, little gimmicky, but nice little touch and again these little buttons here just felt really really good uh with you know them being those these kind of like airplane switches or something it just it looks really cool and really nice to use and we also have that up here for the lights inside here which yeah we'll get to the lights soon uh when we get to the back um but yeah we have that here we come down a little bit more and we have the usb connection down here and this is where it's a little tricky because I do have my phone connected via USB, even though we have wireless Apple CarPlay. And 
usually I complain about, you know, if you're gonna have everything wireless, make everything wireless. So this does have a wireless charger in the armrest, but it is not big enough for my phone. My phone is too long for that little, little uh, wireless charger in here. It does have like a little thing that you can resize for larger phones, but it just still did not fit in it. So I've been using the cable and because of that, I, and I can't even just fit it in here to close it because it has to only be for the wireless charger. Uh, I don't, I have my phone down here and it's been a little cumbersome because it's not a really big opening and my phone does move around. So yeah, that's been a little tough ergonomically to have set up there. We come back a little bit more and we have the cup holders. So we do have two cup holders. They look mini sized, but they really held a lot. I look, they have a small gap in between them, which made the world of a difference when we went to go get big drink cups, 32 ounce cups fit there with no problem. I was really, really surprised. I was scared. <laughs> I was like, these cups are not gonna fit. And because of that little spacing, small, small little spacing made all the difference in the world. So definitely a great little thing there. Now comes to the fun part and what you guys have probably already seen me do and mention is this is a six speed. So this is the six speed model. Thankfully, I got to drive a manual. <laughs> it's been a while, um, but yeah, I really loved this six speed. And yeah, shifter's nice. Uh, only thing I would have liked is, would have been cool if the, the gear pattern was illuminated at night just you know add that little touch add those little mini mini uh gimmicks that have you know have been in this car that would have been a nice added touch i'm sure you could probably do that aftermarket so we have that then we have the controls down here for the radio for basically the user interface i used it twice <laughs> it is that bmw looking uh design down here but it it it's so out of reach here with the armrest and you can pull the arm you can push the armrest down so that it's at an angle like this and i can i can reach it easier but when you pull the emergency brake uh to or the parking brake yes this does have a manual parking brake it's not electronic so that's a nice thing to have as well what happens though is that when you lift it 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 moves the armrest back up and honestly, the armrest up here is the better, more comfortable option. So yeah, haven't used that much, if anything, really. So we have that. Now we get to the back and as you can see, you probably can't see my kids see. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff, like the video, share it, that kind of stuff. Uh, I do have a six year old and we typically put his car seat in so that he can enjoy the rides and so I can give you guys information regarding kids seats. There was no way in hell I was gonna be able to put his car seat in here. It was too big. So we do have his booster seat in here and it's been fine. He, he loved it, no complaints, has plenty of space. Again, as a kid with the booster seat, um, my, he, barely kicked my wife or actually he can barely reach my wife's back seat so if he accidentally moved it wasn't it really wasn't an issue so we have that the only thing that was a little tough is because of how the the seatbelt works with his booster seat we did have to kind of get in the back and it's a little bit uncomfortable to get in the back and then have to buckle him in so just be aware of that it got to a point where we were teaching him, making sure that he knew how to put it on himself and we double checked and he was doing it right. <laughs> um, and the only other thing, like I mentioned earlier with the lights is there is no light in the back. So we wanted to make sure he kind of took a nap uh, on our long drive and we wanted to make sure that he was upright, you know, nice safe position, but we couldn't tell because there is no light in the back. We tried, uh, you know, using this light to see if it worked uh, enough to go to the back and there isn't. So that was kind of something that I wish there was a back light there, just a little like little dome light would have been nice to have there. Then we get to the trunk area and the trunk area is very small. Don't expect things you know, don't expect a massive road trip. We did just pack one bag. We packed everything in one bag. It wasn't a one day trip, so it wasn't too bad. We were able to get everything in. 
and but again it was that little underneath compartment that was really a lifesaver so if you get a mini it was a nice little secret compartment because i thought okay there's you know this is where it is but no there's actually a larger compartment underneath which was nice oh and the other thing again this is a two-door mini if we had a four-door then you would definitely have easier space to to put a back seat there but do you really want a four-door mini i mean that i don't know uh typically i'm a big fan of four doors but this is fun you you get a mini to be to have a mini to have a mini car <laughs> so yeah that's what so that's what i would say about that so let's talk performance we have a 2.0 liter inline four turbocharged pumping out 228 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque. That is going to the six-speed manual. Yes, yes, a six-speed manual. You don't understand how happy I was to drive this manual car, because like I said, it's been a while since I've driven a manual car, and I was stuck in some traffic, and you know, first gear, first gear, first gear, second gear a little bit, then back to first gear, I loved it. I loved the torture. <laughs> I loved the torture of traffic and being, you know, that situation. So I did love it. Now, when we're talking about this engine, it's been really fun. It's been really fun. The power deliveries is a little bit old school turbo, uh, meaning there is a little bit of a lag down under. Um, now with this though, it is a little bit weird because first gear, I, first gear, I think the mapping of the engine does feel a little bit different. So, and that has to do with the traction control so that you don't have a lot of, you know, uh, wheel spin, but it does with the traction control, it does kill a lot of the power. So there were times where I needed to kind of get my jump to, to, you know, make a turn and it kind of was like, uh, oh yeah, I gotta do stuff, <laughs> that, that situation. So just be aware that that's in first gear because I was in second gear in a lower, in a fairly low RPM and then I accelerate and you definitely feel the power is a little bit different. So I feel the mapping is, is different with first gear. And I tried even taking traction control off. I don't know internet if you guys can help me out, but I tried turning it off and it wasn't, it wasn't really turning it off completely. So it was still holding me back uh, in first gear. Again, maybe it's a safety thing, uh, you know, for loss of traction, but whatever it is, yeah. As far as the, the drive modes we have, we have sport, green, and mid. Um, they are really, really good at what they're supposed to do. Green is extremely good at reducing the response of the throttle but it, it still lets you you know if you're if you're accelerating harder it will say okay i need to give you a little bit more but it's been really really good at at doing that and it does make the engine significantly quieter which is what we have it at right now mid is just that it's a little bit of like hey we're not going to be as aggressive and we're going to give you a little bit more power um, and we're gonna give you a little bit more noise too. I don't know if it's pumped in. If it is, it's a really good job because I don't hear it or in the sense of my, my oral perception is not coming from the speakers. It's coming from the front, which is good, which is, you know, coming from the engine or the exhaust actually. Actually, uh, I would say more from the exhaust, yeah. Uh, so we have that. Then sport, sport is sporty. <laughs> That's what it is, and it does a really good job at it. It also has something fun, which we'll get to. But yeah, the Sport has been really responsive and everything. My favorite thing about Sport is it has rev matching. It has automatic rev matching, which is a shame. And it probably, again, internet, help me out. It probably is available on the other modes, but I, I again, I couldn't find stuff. But if it is available in the, even in the mid, just give it to me in the mid, it made downshifting so smooth. I tried down rev matching it myself and it was okay. I wasn't that bad, you know, for a new car that I haven't driven and, you know, trying to match the revs and seeing what gear I can downshift. But this 
car made me a better manual driver. As weird as that sounds, because I can, and it's, what I mean by that is with the rev matching, I can focus on, you know, let's say we're out on the track, I can focus on the turn, I can focus on the steering, I don't have to have another point of my, you know, my concentration focusing on that. Now the performance has just been really, really fun. And I'll go ahead and switch it. So we are in third gear, I'm in green. And let me see if you guys can hear the, the engine change. It's just, it is definitely noticeable going from one mode to the other. And another thing with, the, with this having the dynamic dampers, holy hell, this thing is amazing. I was so worried that on the drive, my wife was going to complain because it is a little stiff on the on the suspension. So don't expect super comfortable ride, but it wasn't it wasn't unbearable. There are some other performance cars that I've driven that even in their comfort mode was just way too stiff. But this is really, really good. And my wife was like, wow, this is really good at absorbing because it would just, you you got the hit and, and it just set you up. It set you, you know, you got the little bump of the, of the bump on the road, but then you were done. It wasn't really bumping and it wasn't teeth chattering uh, or shattering, shattering, chattering. Yeah, it, it, it didn't hurt your teeth. <laughs> so we have that. And when we, uh, again, when we're dealing with the, with the rev matching. So right now I'm in sixth and we are doing about one and a half uh, RPMs or 1,500. Let me go down to third and you guys will hear this. Second, yes. And then you give it a little bit and man, does it pull. It really pulls hard. And these tires are super, super grippy. The brakes, the brakes are so good. Again, just downshifting for me. Making sure that the car isn't unsettled, which is nice, which is nice. I have to just focus at that point on the drive, on the turn. And yeah, I'm gonna hear it. Oh, you know, it's all computerized and all this stuff, but why? And it's not making me a lazy driver by all means. It, it is making me a better driver because again, I don't have to deal with, especially if I'm braking and I'm downshifting, I can focus my, my foot on the brake and I, I can put the right amount of pressure in the sense that, you know, if I heel toe, I might take off a little bit too much, a little bit of, of the pressure off the brake or put a little bit too much when I do the blip of the gas when you're rev matching. So it makes sense. And, and again, I will fight, <laughs> I will fight this feature to the death, so to speak, because I, I really do think it's a helpful feature. And again, it's, it's been a while since I've driven a manual and the fact that this manual has it. And I told my brother that he had a C, C8 Corvette, um, uh, C7, C7, yes, I believe. Uh, his was manual and it did have rev match and he loved it. So it really is a great, and we've always driven manual cars. We, we grew up on manual cars. So it's a nice little technology thing to have. And like I mentioned with the steering wheel in sport mode, this feels super heavy and I love it. It's really, really, uh, you know, it's really rewarding in the sense that, so you do feel a lot of the road and with these tires, it is significantly noisier and you do feel, uh, again, a lot of the nuances of the road, but not in a bad way. If my wife wasn't complaining, in fact, she found it more rewarding uh, to kind of feel what was on the road, you'll love it too. <laughs> She's the biggest critic of, of uh, you know, rides and how, how it feels and how, you know, suspension bounces and things like that. So if she approves, yeah, you guys will approve as well. So we, uh, and again, with the steering wheel being in the sport mode, it definitely felt, oh, we just got a little 
uh, crackle and pop back there. Uh, it definitely feels really nice. And now comes to the big, couple of big questions is $40,000. Yes, this is $40,000. Um, financially, it is the stupidest thing you could ever do to spend $40,000 on a mini. And I, and I wish I could do it. <laughs> I wish I could do it. If you could do it because this car is up there with the M2. Yes, as much as I loved that M2 and I think it is the perfect car, this is right there with it. Yeah, it is just that damn good. The other thing as well is who is this for? Um, if you got a Porsche GT3, I would probably say, and you don't want to put miles on that, or you just want to have track miles on that, spend the 40,000 and get this. Now I haven't driven a GT3, but I've been in a GT3 and yeah. Or if you have an M2 CS and you don't want to put miles on that, get this because this is going to be that car you're going to put a ton of miles on and or going to be your daily driver but still have an exhilarating feel to it because yeah this little guy is just that damn good man i have had a blast again and i get to share it with yeah my wife and my kiddo in the back they loved it and like i said if yes the 40,000 i kept coming back to it and saying it's stupid to spend that much money on a little car like this that it's not very practical it is not very practical at all but i can't help to want to do it if i could <laughs> well guys i hope you've enjoyed my review i've had a blast in this mini this has been so much fun and remember find the right gear oh yeah and also find the right rest because this can See ya.